The clocks go back on Sunday, which means shorter nights. This lack of daylight can cause seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. In today's episode, we look at one way to beat the winter blues. But first, what is SAD? Seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression that comes and goes in a seasonal pattern. SAD is sometimes known as winter depression because the symptoms are usually more apparent and more severe during the winter. Some people with SAD may have symptoms during the summer and feel better during the winter. Symptoms of SAD can include a persistent low mood, a loss of pleasure or interest in normal everyday activities, irritability, feelings of despair, guilt and worthlessness, feeling lethargic, lacking in energy and sleeping during the day, sleeping for longer than normal and finding it hard to get up in the morning, craving carbohydrates and gaining weight, difficulty concentrating and decreased sex drive. For some people, these symptoms can be severe and have a significant impact on their day-to-day -day activities. You should consider seeing your GP if you think you might have SAD and you're struggling to cope. I've been reading up on light boxes and they are one way in which you could combat seasonal affective disorder because in the winter or even on a dark sort of dull summer's day, you may not be getting the amount of daylight that you need to lift your mood. Now these boxes, light boxes, are supposed to provide light to compensate for that that you are missing. So I bought one online and it only cost about 14 or 15 pounds. I've not used it yet. It comes with a USB power connection that you can plug into either your computer or a USB socket if you've got one of those and some plugs do come with them now we've got one so i've got paul's computer set up here and it does have the usb socket so i'm going to stick that in there oh and something did light up momentarily uh so this looks as though it's a power button oh gosh. gosh now look at that now I'm not sure if you could, is it getting brighter? Or is it just me imagining things? I think the middle one makes it dimmer. Oh, no, oh geez. look at that. Oh, maybe this one makes it less. Yeah. Oh, there's different types of light. Look at this. Different shades of it. Yeah. Oh, so wow. the first button obviously then is showing different yeah shades of, of white i suppose and the middle button is for brightness oh I, I see so the amount of it must go in sort of different levels and there's a timer as well i do i do have an instruction leaflet but whoever reads those right <laughs> i think it's sort of quite sensitive and what you're supposed to do you are supposed to sit with the light facing you well, sort of, yeah. Um, at like an angle? Well, it, it doesn't really have to be at an angle, but it does say on the instructions, it can be as close as 15 centimetres to you. So that's, mm. uh, I, I would say this is about 30 centimetres. But for it to have effectiveness, no more than about 60 centimetres, which is probably that. So I suppose it depends how much that you can actually withstand. Um, but as you can see, it is quite bright and you could, I guess, just use it as a light as well. So we'll just have to see this winter if it does have any effect on helping our moods, which can be low at times. Hey, we have a really special message for the viewers. And what might that be? You know what to do. Please subscribe to It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. If you wake up in the middle of the night and need to go to the toilet, 
you may have to put on the light, but this motion sensor will help you in avoiding putting on that light. So now let's take a look. So this light has become activated once I entered into the room. And it has eight different colors that it will change to, ranging from red, orange, white, green, blue. So this is a really good invention to help you during the night. What are you doing, Marcus? I'm trying to find our subscribers. They seem to have disappeared. So please subscribe. We're all looking after the pennies and in autumn and winter when it's colder, you want to try to keep as much heat in your house as possible. And a tip and trick is to get some foil and to put it at the back of the radiator with the idea being that rather than the heat just blasting into the wall here or the, the background that it will then bounce off back off the foil and into the room. So we're going to try this in preparation for the colder weather coming and I've cut two pieces to size already and I've got some tape as well so I'm just literally just going to use a piece of tape on either side to hold it in place like so and I've got my other bit here let's do it that way because it's a little bit ragged at the bottom so we'll do that like this and that over there. Now you may need some more foil so you can basically just cut the amount that you need and this was a really really cheap foil that I got that was only 99p at Lidl so you don't need to like use really expensive foil that you will be using perhaps for your Christmas turkey. So we'll just finish the job and you can see I've got my roll of foil and I'm just going to cut this piece off. I guess you could just rip it there we go. It's very makeshift, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the thing, it's not what it looks like, it's the function that it carries out. So we'll put this piece down here. Like that. Now I've got some more tape to hold it in place. Like this and like that and I'll maybe get another little bit of tape just to hold on that piece that's that's broken there. If you like our channel so far why not hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Well when you're out and about in the winter time you might be susceptible to colds and your nose might be blocked. Now I've got a top tip and trick that I have used and Paul's getting very worried about it. But do not worry, it's not that gross or at least it shouldn't be. If you're blocked up, you might sort of get a tissue and, oh, I've actually got some in my pocket, that's handy. And hold your nostril like this and then catch whatever it is like that. However, <laughs> you've got other orifices, such as your ears. <laughs> Stay with me on this. I discovered last winter that a really great way to clear your nostrils is to do the following. The only thing is you might not be able to use a tissue at the same time. Unless someone helps you. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone's going to help you with this. And hopefully there won't be any grossness Discharge. because both my nostrils seem pretty clear at the moment while we're filming this so I'm going to put my fingers in my ears like this 
and then I'm going to use my thumb to hold one side of the nostril which means I am now blocking all orifices but one and then all you simply do is blow out through your nostril <laughs> and keep your mouth closed <laughs> and then switch Wow, oh that's quite a clear out, I have to say. That looks disgusting. <laughs> Did anything come out? <laughs> but you can imagine if you were blocked up, that the mucus basically just flies everywhere. So just be careful where you do it. It might be an idea to do it outside with no one around. Hello, everybody. I don't normally see you on these normal episodes, but I thought I'd give you a special announcement that the clocks will go back an hour at 2 a.m. on Sunday from 2 a.m. to 1 a.m. So don't forget to put your clock back by an hour on Sunday at 2 a.m.